I'm going to be uh, painting on this cradled panel. Um, it's been pre-painted with black gesso and then a coat of black acrylic paint. And I've taped off the sides, which are about one and five eighths inch thick. Um, taped them off because I don't know exactly what I want to do with them when I'm finished. So uh, I'll have that option open at the end. And I'm going to start out with this uh, Payne's Gray. It's got a little white mixed in. Okay, so I, I have this sort of uh, vision in my head um, of early fall days where the, the leaves have started turning, um, but the skies are, are actually kind of stormy. So that plays between summer and fall, and we're almost there. Um, so, yeah, I wanted this darker sky there. And I'm coming in with some green. Um... You know, there's still usually a lot of green around in early fall, so I wanted to have some of that in there. I'm going to just spread this around a little bit. I'm using a bowl scraper, um, or it's also called a squeegee, but um, it's you can find them usually in kitchen stores, and um, this one is made by Messermeister. And now I'm putting in some bright red. I really want these colors to stand out against that gray sky. And now I'm coming in here with some Naples yellow. Um, don't want everything to be obnoxiously <laughs> loud, so the yellow is a more subdued yellow. And now I have some orange here. You have to have orange for fall colors. Let's spread that around a little bit. They're already looking good against that pants gray. It really makes everything kind of stand out and pop. Okay, so move some of this in. And gonna put a little bit down here. And I'm kind of just moving things around right now. I actually use this bowl scraper or squeegee, whichever you like. Um, like many people use a paintbrush. I use it a lot when I'm painting. So I covered up that black place. I didn't want that black to surround that yellow and make it like a, a point of interest. I just wanted to uh, add the yellow at the bottom. So here I come back in here with red. And this is, I want this painting to be uh, kind of noisy and lacy like trees would be uh, against a sky. A little more green. I just keep all these colors out of my palette and just go back in there and keep picking and, and replacing them in different places around the painting. Some more orange. This is cadmium orange that I'm using and a cadmium red. The green, I believe, is a um, sap green, olive green. I can't remember now. And back in here a little bit more of the Naples yellow. Bringing up some to the top. I'm already getting, it's starting to feel already a little bit like what I'm going for, you know, that stormy sky at the back of the bright fall foliage. green back in here. I don't do a lot of color mixing on my palette because it actually happens here on the panel uh, when I'm um, you know blending and things so um, I kind of like it to to see what happens color mixing wise as it's playing out. smooth that out a little bit. I wanted to bring some of that Payne's Gray in because I wanted it to seem as though there was a little break in the foliage here and there. Adds a little bit of interest as well. And 
going in here with a, a catalyst uh, scraper. These are from art supply stores. And um, putting in some markings, um, sort of like branches under a tree. I, I have a lot of nature-inspired paintings, and this will be one of them, too. And, yeah, bringing that in, kind of adds some texture and gives you that, that idea of trees or forest. And this one has a little give, but it, it can make a pretty hard line, that, that catalyst uh, scraper. So. And then I like to go back with the squeegee and kind of soften those up just a bit. A little more green over here. I'm ready for fall. Oh, I don't know why, but it seemed like such a long summer. I'm just ready. It's my favorite season anyway, so I'm always ready for it. I scraped off a little bit of that orange so I could put this Payne's Gray in. It was awfully wet, and you know, Payne's Gray mixed with the bright colors just makes some dull colors. So um, even with a light hand, it's hard to not mix them. So you can just take that color right down to the panel while it's still wet, and it's as if it wasn't there. So um, then go back in, and I'm going to use, this is going to be kind of fun. I'm using uh, tissue. This is like you would use to wrap gifts. And you just kind of crinkle it up, and then you take a brayer. You could use your hand, I suppose. Uh, I usually use the brayer. It gets a nice evenness. And while it's still crinkly, don't pull it all out flat. You, you just roll it, and you can actually then transfer color from paint from one part of your painting to another. Plus, the big benefit why I'm doing it on this one is I kind of wanted that crinkly look. You know, it kind of makes you think of... Um, all leaves being all crunchy and crinkly and uh, and it adds some some extra interest to the painting makes it seem a little more fall like than than spring I must give us like an antique or batiked look maybe and then I'll you know, just do a little tweaking on that and Maybe smooth it out in some parts. Lost a little bit too much of the orange. I'm going to go back, replace that. And some of the yellow. Some of my markings got a little bit um, obscured too, so just kind of freshen those up. Put some yellow down here. I want to get that idea that leaves are falling from, you know, taller parts of the tree down to the ground. And it adds to my composition as well, so. More green. Just doing some little tweaks here and there now. Put some red back in over there in that big, big area of green to kind of chop it up a little bit. I really like that paint's gray with these bright colors. I think it makes everything, sort of gives it its best look. And then a little orange back over in here. Getting there, close. Orange. Smooth that out a little bit. I love that orange on the red, it's really pretty. Some again over here by that green, it's like a lot of green. <laughs> and just kind of, that orange really faded out with that tissue paper, so I'm just going to kind of add some back in. 
it was the most wet and the most thick, so it kind of pulled it off. All right, back here with the red. And again, I just wanted to scrape off some of that orange so it's not too big of a blob of orange. Cut it up a little bit. Looks like there's some sky coming through. I say I do abstracts, and I do, but, um, you know, those ideas come from somewhere. <laughs> and uh, in this case, I think nature has so much abstract in it that it's a great inspiration. Put some of those hard lines back in there. Okay, smooth out a little bit. If you're going to work with cold wax, you have to get these, this um, bowl scraper. It's just the best. It's my favorite tool. And it does so many things. back in there again. It's a good idea to stand away from your painting like 10 feet, 12 feet, and look at it from afar because you can really see where, oh, I don't know, there's things that are need some work. So I think that's it, and I'm going to call this Dark Skies. Please visit my website, kimsobat.com, and my new YouTube channel is Kim Sobat, where I have other painting demonstrations and tips and tutorials. Um, if you are interested in having me come to your town to do a cold wax and oils workshop, please contact me at kim at kimsobat.com. Thanks for watching.